Well, hello everybody, John BTV Digger here for my next video. Thanks for joining me here. This video is going to actually comprise two separate hunts. Uh, today is uh, Thursday, April the 19th. I was able to get out last week for a hunt, I believe last Thursday, something like that. Talked to a wonderful old woman at a 1812 house that had some old homes in a cornfield and some other part of her property that she gave me permission to hunt. And I went out there and found a few things there that I'll share with you. Not a lot, but a few interesting items I think you'll enjoy. I also talked to her and she's going to let me detect her whole property. She moved there a while back and she doesn't think it's ever been detected, so I'm really excited. Uh, we've had a lot of rain and snow and you'll see in the videos it's really mucky, so I'm going to wait to get out to her yard maybe in a week or two. Maybe that'll be in my next video if it dries out, because if you try to dig in a yard, at least in this part of the country, this time of year we call it mud season up here and you'll just destroy the yard. So I want to let it dry out a little bit. If not, I'll go back uh, to some other farm field permissions that I've yet to hit and maybe try that as well. The second half of the video, I return back to my virgin site that I've hit four times now, I believe, and find more wonderful, great stuff, including an early state copper uh, and some other just great, great, wonderful relics. And I spent about maybe four hours there, and that was yesterday uh, uh, on Wednesday, I believe that's the, the 18th. So come along and join me. I'll take you along again. The first part's on the farm fields uh, down in the central part of the Champlain Valley, and the last half of the video is my virgin site. And I'll share, your, share with you some of the great stuff I found. Come along and join me. I cut copper, baby. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Another awesome, fully intact crotal bell. Look at that. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, it's not a coin. And so this is going to be the obverse. And it's another Drake bust. In 1865, the date's clearly readable right there on the phone. Look at that. Great seal button. And it's pink, so maybe it's not crushed. It's not crushed. Holy crap. Well, here I am at the first home site. Uh, there's about five home sites on this property, like I told you before. I'm trying uh, one of the earlier ones first. Um, there's a lot of can slow in here because I'm right by a road. There's my car and there's the dirt road here, but there's a house or something right down here back in the mid 1800s and uh, I found an old washer <laughs> and then um, I got this and I don't think this is tremendously old, but it's older and it looks like it's an old valve valve uh, valve latch or something like that. It is threaded, um, but it's dark green. I'll have to clean that up. That looks good. That's probably a hundred years old. Um, there's probably some older stuff in here from based off of what I'm looking at, but uh We'll see if we can find a few more things, guys. On to the next find. Well, I'm back post after that, uh, <clears throat> like, keg tap thing I found. I moved on. Uh, again, the woman was a very nice woman, an older woman, about 90 years old. Gave me permission to detect her 1812 house. I'm going to come back to that on a better day. Uh, it's a little cloudy and cold out here today, but that's an awesome place to... And she says it's never been hunted. Uh, she's lived there since the 1960s, so I'm a little excited. Uh, maybe I'll bring a friend out with me, but I'm moseying onto this cornfield here, and there are two or three houses out here, and it was a booger to find them. But I finally, after about another 45 minutes, found the iron patch on the first site, and have dug a, a silver-plated spoon, which I knew I was on the site, and then I had a nice 78 signal. And here we are at our next target, and I believe this is going to be a flat button. But let me take a look. It sure is. Look at that. Oops. Dropped it. Um, it's got some wonderful gold gilt on it, too. Look at that. The uh, shank is broken off. Um, but an early flat button from the 18 uh, mid-1800s for sure. So I know I'm on the right spot. I've only been here about 10 minutes after I found the iron patch. So I've only really got about an hour and a half left to hunt, and I've got to get out of here. But I'm going to stick around here for a while and mosey around and see if we can find a few more things for you. All right, on to the next find. That's a good start after finding this place. Well, here we are at my next find, folks. Right next to Mr. Earthworm there. Right in this little hole right there. Most of you that dig colonial relics know what this is. Look at that. Get off there, buddy. Nice uh, whole suspender clip. Uh, missing the uh, kind of slot there that the suspender strap would go through. That's a nice find. I'll take that any day. I don't know, mid to late 1800s maybe? Something like that. This house was here on the 1850s map, but it was also here in 1870s. And then gone by the early 1900s. So there's a lot of mar a lot of like turn of the century modern garbage in here, but there's some goodies to be picked out if you're just patient and work through the iron. That's a good find. Let's see if we can find a few more things before I head out of here. All right. 
right, here's our first find uh, of the day here. We pan down there, you see that right there? I'd missed dug the hole, and by the way, we've had a l more rain and snow, and look at the bottom of these holes. Muck vest, folks. Um, so I'm trying to like crouch down and not kneel, because I will just get soak my pants to death here. But that's a nice little early flat button. And uh, it was ringing up really high, I don't know why. It was giving me like a 90, and then when I got it out, um, it was a smaller target, but I'll take that another little plain, plain Jane uh, coat button, or actually this is probably like a cuff button, uh, from way back in the early 1800s. That's a good start to the day. I've only been here about five minutes. All right, let's go find a few more things, guys. Right, I'm just kind of wandering around the back of the house here in places I don't think I've hit before. Again, I can pan around and you've seen this place. I mean, there are hundreds of acres of fields here. The main stuff was within about two or 300 yards of the house, but still that gives you a lot of the ground to cover. And I've just gone to and started slowing down because all the easy targets are gone um, for the most part. So if you just slow down and take it easy with the AT Pro, you can catch those little signals that are a little bit harder to, to find. And I got a solid 80. I thought it was another large scent, but you never know. Um, it could be trash, but check this out, folks. This is a style I ain't found in a while. That's an old, old early 800, 1800s, late 1700s uh, buckle. One piece, and it's soldered on the on the top there with one with one piece of metal. Um, I don't have a main buckle book like some of these guys do. I need to get myself one. But just from looking online and reading other people's posts, that's a that's a really old buckle. I'm, I'm going to say 1790 to 1820. Something like that, that as a first guest. Great find. Let's keep moving along, see if we can find a few more things, guys. On to the next. Well, my car is way over there. I've worked back out over this way. Um, a couple of good signals that just turned out to be Canslaw. This one I swore was going to be Canslaw again. It was like an 80 to about one inch. But you know, I dig everything, and you never know on an old site like this. And look at that. You know what that is, folks? That's a big old dandy button. A little bit, a little bit of taco there. Fold it over, but I'll take that any day. That's a nice, uh, I think probably brass dandy button. There may be a design on that. I'll maybe try to, since it's not bent past 180 degrees, I'll try to straighten that out. But that's a, that's a nice find. I'll definitely get you a cleaned up shot of that. All right, let's see if we can find a few more things, guys. On the next. Well, you see this right here? This is me smiling, folks. You know why? I got my number copper number 12 out of this site. Unbelievable. I keep picking through the iron, got an amazing signal, you know, and it's like, I've been over this, this particular patch of ground, it gotta be three or four times now. You never get it all. Let me pan the camera around really slowly. This is my iPhone, so bear with me if it's a little shaky. 80 signal, only two inches deep. Right there. Unbelievable. Another copper. And that's a thin one, it's not a thick one, so it's going to be probably a drape bust or maybe an early matron, maybe even a classic head, who knows. I haven't pulled a classic head out of this site yet, but it's definitely a thinner one. Could it even be another KG, you never know. I'm not going to be able to ID that right now here for you live because it's just too caked. I mean, if you look again at the hole, it was right down in there. Um, but heck yeah, baby. Another copper. Let me get you a cleaned up shot and we'll also have it in the wrap up for you. Great find. All right, thanks, folks, back for my next find. Uh, my large scent was, was right there. And I just kind of moved over a row here and started coming down. Uh, this is a weird and wonderful, guys. Check this out. It's part of an old key, and that is brass as well. So it's part of an old key broken off in the original lock mechanism. It doesn't look like it's a front door lock, but that's a big old two-thirds of a skeleton key in the lock hole, and the lock is gone. How killer is that? I'll clean that up. I may just leave that all together as one piece because that's really cool looking. I'll scan the hole here and see if the other piece of the key's in there. Probably just broke off and that's where they left it there. But and very neat find. Love finding old stuff like that, whether it's a, a coin or anything from way back when. All right, let's keep on moving along. Still got a couple hours to go here before I head home for dinner. On to the next. All 
all right like three minutes after that key i'm in the little hot spot here that copper that uh skeleton key in the lock mechanism and then dug down into this big muck of luck right there it was only about a 50 signal then i got it out and it was like an 80 and i think i've got another big dandy button see right there that round thing in the clod right there let's see if we can get it out together holy crap you know what i think that's a dandy yeah it's too thin to be a coin um and the shank is going to be probably i can't even peel the shank but i'm sure there's one there it's just gotten torn off i think that's it right there big old freaking coat button from back around 1800 or so great find i'm gonna stick around here in this like a 20 yard by 20 yard square area because i'm finding a few stuff things right here just by going really slow and the ground's so wet uh the targets are coming out good so uh, we'll stick around here for a little bit, see if we can find a few more things. On to the next. Alright, here we are at our next find after that, uh, those last couple of things I showed you. I did dig two more buttons, one of which is a nice tomback, and I'll show you that in the wrap-up, but I'm not going to show you every single button I dig. Uh, here's a nice other little relic. It's kind of smashed, but I'm going to take it right there. You see that in the clod? You know what that is? That looks like... A smashed thimble and it's torn up right there um, and the top still on there it's all caked with dirt and everything but hey a nice little old relic this is the second thimble I've dug uh, right from this little area I know my last time I had a thimble in there as well so I'll take that any day I've only got about a half an hour left here it's uh, getting close to five o'clock and I gotta head home so um, I'll stick around just for a few more minutes if I have anything uh, worth uh, posting I'll come back and join you otherwise we'll see you in the wrap-up Okay, we're back inside for the green velvet wrap-up. Let me go through quickly what I found. Remember, again, this was two hunts on two separate weeks. Um, I'm speaking on April the 18th or 19th right now. So the stuff that you saw in the later part of the video was what just happened yesterday. And then I had a hunt about a week ago in which I talked to an old lady. And I, I told you about that in the intro. Um, I got permission to detect her 1812 house. Haven't been there yet. Really looking forward to it but detected some old houses in cornfields. And I only found a few things, so I'm wondering if those have been hit before. But I did find a few goodies. So let me start with that. I did find these two um, valve stops from about the turn of the century. Those were were, uh, were certainly not colonial, but I'll take old stuff like that any day. Those are very nice finds. This one right here is made by the McNabb and Harlan Manufacturing Company. It's actually got the, the, uh, the lettering right there, and I showed you a close-up on that when I found that one. Those guys were in business from 1850 to about 1910, 1920 before they went out of business. So this is turn of the century. Even though that house was listed on the 1850s uh, map, I didn't find anything there that was 1850s. Just a couple old washers and these uh, turn of the century valve stem covers. So who knows? You know, sometimes you're you're skunked out and sometimes what shows on the map is is a little more confusing on what actually is in there. So who knows on that? But that was two nice finds. And then I moved to that, moved to that other place which had a... A smaller house and another larger house in the cornfield and I think that place had been hit too. I did squeak out a few goodies. I did find a, a drawer knob or a drawer pull, a scutcheon there. Uh, I got a silver, plate, silver plated spoon bowl. And then my two best finds from that area was um, I got this nice gilded flat button. I showed you a close up of that. W.C. Tuckerman. If you do any research on this, um, these were made in about the 1820s and there's some evidence that says they were also worn by Confederate soldiers in the Civil War. But heck, folks, I'm up here in Vermont, so I think these were mass-produced, and maybe they were used in the Civil War, but there are no Confederates living up here unless there was some interesting history of that place. So I think that was just a common farm field, everyday man's button that was worn. And then this nice uh, suspender clip, and it's got a patent date of March 7th, 1871 on it. Um, it's missing the little attachment piece where the suspender would go through, but those are always very nice finds, and I just... A lot of these finds, I just use Brillo, guys. Um, they're not worth a ton of stuff other than personal value, so Brillo will clean them right up. And then let's go over to the finds I found yesterday. This, again, is a return to my colonial home site, and this place just continues to produce. It's unbelievable. I mean, if you look over here, these are all the large scents and buttons and everything I've just pulled out of there since uh, last December. I've been there, I think, four times now, um, and just some great, great stuff coming out of there. Tomback buttons, early flat buttons, large scents, you name it. So going to here, I always uh, uh, save a few of these uh, glass and pottery pieces, some of this really old blown glass. I like keeping some of that stuff. Um, I didn't get all these things on tape. Uh, this is, looks like an old spoon uh, handled, an old spoon or fork. It's really thin. That's what I'm going to guess that is. 
The thing I thought was a thimble right here is actually a piece of lead. Um, so it could be an old break to a to a buggy, or it could be a part of the end of a whiffle pole. Um, if you look those up, those are kind of horse tack uh, adornments. Or maybe even the end or nubbing into like a spinning wheel or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, but I kept that because it was obviously made for some function there. Got several flat buttons, two, four, six, seven buttons. Um, uh, this is a really old partial pewter button, 1700s for sure. And then my two best buttons, good gracious. I used Brillo on these as well, but look at the design on these old dandy coat buttons, guys. Kind of a starfish pattern with uh, stars in it, shank broken off. And then this guy is just amazing. Look at that. Another uh, beautiful design dandy button. So I will take those every day. Early coat buttons from the late 1700s, early 1800s. Got my two buckles. One's made out of iron. Didn't film that. And I got my nice one. I did get you on film and I used a little Brillo on that. I may use uh, some, uh, also polish that up a bit uh, later after uh, we get done with the video. But that's a nice early 1800s, late 1700s buckle. And then finally, uh, my best two finds, I'll say uh, this uh, coin here, if I can find it, turned out to be a Connecticut copper. Um, it was really white, so again, Brillo on these guys are not worth anything. Um, and I wanted to see what I got, so it's not a silver coin or not something of real value. Who cares? It's just personal value. Brillo on that, you can see the bust facing left there, and you can just make out, I believe, the O and the C in Connecticut. And you flip her on back, and there's Lady Britannia with the Latin inscription, Indy et Lib on the side, it's hard to make out. 1787, I believe, on that variety, even though I don't have a date. You can kind of cross match the uh, reverse and obverse dies in the coin book and kind of get a general sense. So I think 1787, so that's a uh, that's an excellent find right there. Put that guy back down. And then my best find, I think, other than that, is this, uh, this skeleton key that was actually inside the lock mechanism. This little thing fell out when I was cleaning it. And you know what? The skeleton key wasn't broken. It's just one of these kind of uh, lock mechanisms. I think this is a like a clock key, to be honest with you. It's not going to go to a door. It's going to go to some sort of um, mechanical apparatus. And if you had to pin me down, I'm going to say that went to an old clock um, that opened a door or something like that. Or you could wind the clock through that mechanism right there. So it wasn't really a lock. It was just an inserted thing where uh, you would twist this this mechanism and it would wind the clock up. But you know what? The thing still goes right in there. Isn't that awesome? So definitely a really cool find to find one of those with still some of that left over uh, from the lock itself or the uh, mechanism itself. Well, that's all I got for this week um, in this video. I appreciate you for joining me. I think on my next video, I, as long as the weather breaks, I'll probably try to have my next video on that 1812 house from the old woman that I, I spoke with who's very nice. Um, and is going to let me detect her property, which has several acres on it. Um, I'm excited to, to, to hit there. Hopefully I can find a few old things to show you on that. If not, i got a couple other farm field permissions lined up. But they're more strict cornfields than hay fields, and it's mucky as heck, as you saw in that video. So I may have to let it dry out for another week before I get onto those sites. But happy for you to join me once again. Um, I thank you for subscribing and watching these. And remember to get out there and dig it all up, folks. It's waiting in the ground for you to find. This is BTV Digger.